Okay, so we're looking at the integral between zero and one of the square root of one minus x squared dx. And this is actually quite a famous integral. And if you recognize it, you might be able to solve it in your head. The reason behind this is because we are actually integrating under a circle. And the way to see that is if we let y to be equal to the integrand, the stuff under the integral, if we let y equal to one minus square root of x squared, then we can square both sides to give us y squared equals one minus y squared, x squared, and then bring on the x squared to the other side, and we have x squared plus y squared equals one. And now this is the equation of a circle. In fact, the circle, the unit circle around the origin. So it goes about zero, zero, and it has radius one. So this is really important because we have the limits zero and one. So the limits are essentially the lines x equals zero. I'll draw them on with another color. We have the lines x equals zero and the line x equals one. So these are our limits, integration limits, and we have this equation. And in fact, this equation only corresponds to the part of the circle in the first quadrant, the one in the top right section. The reason behind this is because the bottom, the bottom right section is given by the minus of this um, function. Because we're squaring, both the plus and minus solution are part of the, uh, the graph of a circle. But just the positive part of this function, that just corresponds to uh, the top right part of this um, diagram. It actually corresponds to the whole, top, the whole top of this function, but we're only interested in the limits between zero and one. So the question really is, what is the area of this region? The area of the region um, bounded by zero and one and the circle, and this is just a quarter of a circle. So if you know that the area of a circle, a CL denoter, is given by pi r squared, and very conveniently our radius is just one, so we can just uh, make this disappear. This tells us that the area of the circle is given by pi exactly, so the area of just a quarter of a circle, the answer to this integral is pi over four. So if you're familiar with kind of circles and the equations of them, you might be able to spot the, the answer of this integral just in one line, it's just pi over four. Now I'm also gonna go through a solution where we use a substitution to actually kind of derive the answer to this without kind of knowing the, the area of a circle. Okay, so to show this integral is equal to pi over four, we need to use a trigonometric substitution. And we do this kind of backwards, so we define x to be sine of u. So normally in substitution, you define u to be a variable of x, but we've done x to be a variable of u. And the reason we've done that is because we know this famous trig identity, sine squared of u plus cosine squared of u equals one. And that tells us we can rearrange this into cosine of u equals the square root of one minus sine squared of u. And now you can see why we made this substitution because we can just replace sine of u by x. So we have cosine of u equals the square root of one minus x squared. And this is exactly what we have in our integral. So if we use a substitution, we can just simplify this to cosine of u. And remember to do the substitution, we need to find dx as well. So just differentiating this, we have dx equals cosine of u, that's the derivative of sine of u, and multiply by du. So we can replace dx by cosine of u du, and we can replace this square root by cosine of u. So let's do that. We have the integral, and we need to think about the limits, which we'll do in a second. But we can replace, as we we're saying, the square root by cosine of u, and then dx is just another cosine of u du. So now let's think about the limits. So we need to put these x values into this original equation to get the corresponding, corresponding u values. So to do this, it's actually asking what's the inverse of sine. So we need to find the arc sine of these values. So arc sine of zero and arc sine of one. And just remember the graph of sine, it's kind of like a wavy function that oscillates like this. And it goes through the origin, which tells us that arc sine of zero is just zero. And it peaks at one when x is pi over two. So this tells us arc sine of one is equal to pi over two. And so we can just substitute these limits in. So they're now zero to pi over two. So we have cosine squared uh, of u, I'll just write that here, zero pi over two. So now we need to integrate cosine squared of u to u. And this is really another nice question in itself because 
To do this, we actually need another identity. We're going to use cosine of 2u, the addition formula for cos. This is cosine squared of u minus sine squared of u. You might remember that. Um, that's just the addition formula. And so we're going to like kind of use that we have a cosine squared here to express this in terms of cosine of 2u. So we need to get rid of this sine squared of u. So we need this identity up here. So think about uh, bringing this cosine squared onto this side. So we have uh, a 1 minus cosine squared of u equals sine squared. And then we can use that to write this as 2 cosine squared of u minus 1. And then, so this is what cosine of 2u equals. We can rearrange this in terms of cosine squared of u. So this just equals a half times cosine of 2u. If I'm bringing the minus 1 onto this side, then dividing by 2, we have a half cosine 2u plus a half. And this is really nice because we can substitute this in and we can integrate this. So we have the integral and it's the same limits because we haven't really changed a variable. We're just using algebra between 0 and 2 pi of a half cosine of 2u plus a half du. And this is something we can integrate. So the integral of cosine is sine and we have the half here. So sine of 2u. But we need to think about using the inverse chain rule because if we differentiate this, we get the cosine back and we have the half here, but we need to use the chain rule to differentiate inside the bracket. So if we differentiate 2u, we just get a 2. So to kind of balance that effect, we need to divide by another factor of 2. And this gives us a quarter. So we have a quarter sine of 2u plus u divided by 2. And we need to add the limits between 0 and pi over 2. And finally, we can see what the solution is because we need to put these limits in. And if we put pi over 2 into this equation, we have sine of pi. And sine of pi is another point where sine, the graph of sine equals 0. So the factor of sine is going to be 0. We can ignore it. And we're also going to have the, the bottom limit of 0. And we also know sine of 0 is 0. So essentially, this term is always going to be 0 for these limits. And then we just need to put these limits into u plus 2. And then if we put 0, that's 0. That doesn't matter. So the only contributing factor in this integral is pi over 2. So we get pi over 2 divided by 2, which is pi over 4. So this is the long way around to prove that uh, this integral equals pi over 4.